e4, e5, knight f3. If d4, then takes, takes, knight c6, queen e3, knight f6. Black has two pieces into the game versus white's one. So black took the initiative away from white early in the game. Instead, knight f3, knight c6, bishop e5, a6, chasing away bishop from its favorable position. Now white bishop is retreating, maintaining pressure on the knight. Bishop c4 would be inferior because white could have played bishop c4 right away but now black has this a6 move which is beneficial for him so bishop a4 knight f6 developing and attacking castle and bishop e7 if knight takes white can regain a pawn with rook e1 instead black decided to develop his bishop on e7 not far away from the home and now rook e1 bringing a rook into the center and protecting a pawn now the threat is let's say h6 takes takes knight takes the pawn so black has to react to the threat. Rook e1 is more preferable to knight c3 because white probably wants to play c3 and provide a retreat for his bishop to save it from an exchange. b5, preventing bishop c6 and knight takes e5, bishop b3, d6, protecting a pawn and threatening knight a5 to remove this really strong bishop. If knight a5 right away, then black would lose a pawn. After d6, we have c3. Now bishop can escape to c2. And also supporting d4 to create a strong pawn center. Knight a5. The purpose is not to attack a bishop but to play c5 next move and control the center. Bishop c2. Naturally white wants to keep both bishops and now c5 as planned controlling the center and opening lines for the queen. d4 striking in the center and threatening to win a pawn on e5. Queen c7 protecting a pawn and developing a queen. It would be bad to take, take, take and knight takes because black would have isolated pawn and white knight would be really strong in the center with no pawns to chase it away so queen c7 h3 really important move to prevent bishop g4 knight is really important here to maintain the center and if bishop g4 takes takes queen would also stop protecting d4 and maintaining the strong center is really important knight c6 knight returns and adds pressure on d4 also threatens let's say a6 takes 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 and black won a pawn because if takes then takes takes and takes so for that reason black hopes to tempt white into playing d5 which looks good you're attacking a knight but then you are releasing a pressure in the center and also now this d5 square is unavailable for your pieces so instead bishop b3 protecting the center and developing a piece castle knight b to d2 developing a knight bishop d7 also developing a piece rook c1 rooks belong to the open files but because there is not any at the moment you should place them at files that are likely to be opened in this case it's c file also in a lot of cases you cannot go wrong if you place them at the central files. Knight e8, planning to advance f pawn, hitting the center, and also opening f file for the rook. Knight f1, rerouting knight to g3 and f5. Beautiful outpost for the knight. g6, not only to keep an enemy knight out of f5, but also to prepare f5. g6 creates two weaknesses f6 and h6, and white will look for ways to use them. Bishop h6, white immediately puts a piece on a weak square. Knight g7, the only move to prevent loss of the exchange by bishop f8. Knight e3, knight wants to go to a beautiful central location. Rook a to e8, black cannot stop the knight with bishop e6 because of d5. He also gives up on playing f5 because that would open the lines and player who has better development is gonna win. And that is white in this case. With rook a to e8, black is making a defensive move, trying to make his position difficult to break. Knight d5, not only fixing the piece on a strong central square, but there is more to it which we'll see very soon. Queen b7, defending a queen, and now knight takes e7. This was the point of knight d5. This bishop was the main protector of weaknesses on dark squares, and in order to capitalize on those weaknesses, white is removing that bishop. Rook takes, this is forced, because if knight takes, then takes, takes, and black is losing a pawn. Now takes, takes, the purpose of this exchange is to open a file for a queen, and now queen d6, exploiting the open file, attacking c4 pawn, and getting closer to f6 weakness. c4, saving the pawn, and now queen f6, threatening mate, and putting another piece on the weakness created by g6 move. Knight h5, stopping mate, and trying to chase away a queen. Queen h4, 
It would be mistake to play queen g5 because of f6 and white queen has to move again while black is making his position harder to break. So queen h4, knight g7, blocking attack on the rook and if queen f6 then knight h5 repeating moves. Bishop e3 rearranging pieces and also threatening bishop c5 winning the exchange. Knight e6 preventing knight c5 and now queen f6 again attacking a pawn. Black cannot try earlier strategy of repeating moves with knight g7 because after bishop c5 if knight h5 then queen h4 and white wins the exchange if rook e6 queen h4 rook f2 e8 and now knight g5 threatening mate and a rook that's why queen c7 protecting a pawn but now bishop h6 now black cannot chase away these pieces that are planted on his weaknesses rook c8 saving the rook rook c to d1 white is not in a rush he improves his pieces seizing the open file next he wants to play rook d5 attack a pawn for the third time and double on the d file rook e to e8 black wants to play queen d8 to exchange queens and reduce power of white's attack but now comes very fine move, knight h2, and after queen d8, knight g4, protecting a queen. And if takes takes, king h8, rook takes d7, and white wins a piece. Black played queen e7. If rook e7, then bishop e3, threatening check, king f8, and mate on h8. If rook e8, to make a room for the king, then knight h6, and mate. After queen e7, white took, black resigned, if takes, and check, king h8 and takes. White wins a piece and that is enough for a win.